KKHT wants you to meet three of the classiest guys in real estate. I am Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And I am Joe Orsak, the king of credit swing. And together, we're the, the real, real estate, estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate right now is smoking hot. So whether it's buying, selling, or owning, you need to check out the Real Estate Rat Pack. They're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, one 800 808 548 and now the real estate rat pack uh, <laughs> she had the goat, goat scream in there with it that's beautiful now, now it's now it's like a three-way uh, thing going on there exactly exactly not bad right ah! <laughs> two, two rats doing a wolf call with a goat uh, the only thing that'd be better at the very end. It's like an animal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ashley, it's Ashley's like an getting animal. Pretty good with those uh, cues there. This is this is like an Animal Planet show. <laughs> yes, we should ask them for sponsorship. It's been an Animal Planet show for a long time. Well, yeah. So are the Permapure crowd is here today. We, we do. You know from, exactly. We got know? people here from Dallas. We got Ashley Bryant here. We've got you know, one of our Jeff best Gibson. shows. Oh, yeah. And one of our best shows we ever had was just speaking about cracks. Yes. Yeah. And so we it's, like you know, it's one of those things it's about getting, you know, the crack crowd back yeah. in here. Well, um, again, we have Jeff crack Gibson crowd. and, of course, the returning for probably the third or fourth time is John Dowdy. Yes. There's probably been more than that. Yeah, well, I don't know how many times it's been, but we always have fun when you're here. You think it was not that... Uh, Exciting the subject for somehow or another, it always ended up being pretty funny. It, it absolutely is. You know, so, still, it's, it's it's probably our number one most played show ever. Well, yes. we've replayed it ourselves. Yeah. And at, least, ourselves. at least by us. At least by us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you can always go to our Facebook page at Permapure Foundation Repla- Repair and play Who Can Guess That Crack? Oh, wow. Is that right? It's fun. Is that a legitimate game? It yeah. is. It really is. You know, we're guessing stair step cracks, um, <laughs> vertical cracks. You know, it's, all, it's all about the fun. Well, with is, the cracks. It's all about that crack. Oh, yeah, it's all about <laughs> I can repair that crack. Um, this is our lovely Ashley Bryan, who has driven all the way down here to be on the show from Dallas. And yes. the course, brought uh, Jeff Gibson, who we're here to introduce as the new marketing person. Say hi to everybody, Jeff. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> a man, a few words. Yes, but uh, yes, he he, he's here to meet the pack, and 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 uh, you know we we love marketing, we love connecting people, and so we want to make sure that uh, that you were included in the process and things like that. And of course, I, yeah, after you go through this, you may say, you know what, this this job's not for me. <laughs> but, that's you know that's why he came down. Yes. We just needed to make sure it was for him. After yeah. this show, show, she she went into it, nursing. It's kind of one of, the, <laughs> kind of one of those survival things. If he can make it through this show, Absolutely. he's in. Yes, he's in. But. Uh, Talk about your your you're doing a lot of different things now. And of course, uh, John, you, you, we talked about this last time. Is that you guys are doing a lot of different things? What? What? Go ahead. <laughs> what? Let him finish. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't know that was that shocking. <laughs> uh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I think Joe saw a crack. Yeah. yeah like, like, <laughs> <"Fair me!" laughs> we're, we're going through a lot of exciting changes. We're rapidly expanding. Um, we're we're looking at new location a new location. I mean, we need we need about double the space in order to maintain production and to uh, meet the demand or supply the demand. Um, plumbing division is coming down next year. I mean, we're we're growing tremendously, and it's all thanks to uh, our real estate friends, all of our people that we've we've made contact with. We've mainly the Rat Pack. Mainly yeah, the, mainly the Rat well, Pack. Well, mainly the yeah. soil. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly yeah. the soil yeah. in Texas. Okay, let's get that straight. Thank you, Houston, for all that alluvial soil. <laughs> yes. yes. Right. So. We're just working the angle on how we can take uh, credit for that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you the credit. Well, well we have three rivers that, that bring it all down for you. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, you know, basically clay. And so we got the San Jacinto, the, uh, the Brazos, and the Colorado all kind of bring all that sediment in for you, which is good for your business. Bad for building. Oh, it's <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic for our business. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, Un- unfortunately for everyone else. And then, actually, you gave me an app one time that I downloaded a thing that if people want to know what kind of soil they have, that you can actually have. A, what was that app called? Do you remember? Oh, it's called... Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. Now. <laughs> That's a great app. <laughs> That's a great app. It's a great app. I can't remember the name. I dot, can't dot remember the name. Dot com, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the name dot com. No, it's, called, it's called Soil Web. Soil web, okay. Soil web. Soil web. Unless you have an understand a running understanding of geology, it makes absolutely no sense. But um, you can do a little homework, do a little research, and it's actually a <laughs> fairly useful tool. It uses the GPS on your phone. 
uh, to determine where you are, and it'll, it'll give you a breakdown of the soil complex. Um, great tool for guys like us. Pretty much useless for homeowners. But, <laughs> but you could always. But you can always call a professional, and they'll come help That's you. Right. Exactly. The Rat Pack is just a source of great useless information for you guys. <laughs> well, we've <been> <laughs> <here>. <laughs> That's right. And request That's an evaluation. Quality and useless absolutely. information. That, that's how you get somebody to inspect your crack. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, we, we, have, <laughs> we have Ashley Bowles will be up in a little bit. We'll be talking about that and, and talk about shooting elevations and things like that to determine if, you know, do we need that service? I we went elevation permit. hunting last winter. <laughs> a, is that right after you went snipe hunting? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shot me a awesome huge elevation. <laughs> <laughs> so Six pointer. See that That's makes right. that makes total sense in our industry. <laughs> Nobody else would know what you're talking but about. It, but after the show, it's going to make sense to people. Yeah, so. it's okay. It made little sense to me when I said well, it. We're going into the to the uh, uh, winter time. You know, yes. as much winter as we get here in Houston. John, if you want to pay attention over here, I'm going to make sure that he's he's holding huh? two yeah, fingers. John. He's, he's done uh, that. Like Peace out. Love. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> what, what should people look forward going into the winter time? Um, wintertime, you know, is, is typically our slower time of the year. Uh, you know, we don't have as much evaporation and as much transpiration of moisture out of soils. Um, if you are up north and happen to be listening in on the Internet or whatever, um, you should be watching out for frost heaves. Um, basically what happens is the, so- the moisture will penetrate the soil as it freezes. I mean, everybody's left a Coke can in the freezer at one point in their life and had it uh, make a tremendous mess. Um when, when we go from a liquid to a solid, we actually gain volume, and that can actually cause your house to move in very, very uncommon places. So um, we usually don't have that problem here in, in Houston, but uh, we have seen stranger things. Well, we have had icy conditions in the past, and it does, this, right. this really uh, disrupts everything. I remember when, like 1992, we had that major freeze got to 9 degrees. Mm-hmm. Now, you all from Dallas, you're used to that. We are. You know, you, we, I, I have seen I more. I can go ice skating. You know. I have seen more frozen uh, telephone lines and electrical lines oh, in yeah. than any place I've ever seen. You don't get at least one or two major ice storms here. No, so and, I, and school closes for like a whole week. So yes. it's awesome. And work doesn't happen. You know, we just get locked ourselves in the house because it freaks out. Well, that's because you have no electricity, no roads, and stuff like that. I remember going down on some icy roads on that. Uh, but, uh, you know, conditions can occur here that will impact. Your structure, and it, it seems like anytime you have any kind of change, major change in temperatures, and we usually do it within one day here. You know, last week it was like it was eight, almost 80 degrees, and now here right. we are down in the mid 50s. We were so. like three degrees from a record high. Well, I think it's interesting, you know, the colder it gets, the more cracks you get to see. So uh, that's right. Pretty yeah. interesting stuff out and, there. And, and but yeah. you, uh, I think one time before you had mentioned that sometimes cracks will actually start closing. Yeah, it's, it's what because we, it stabilizes this time of year. Right. It's what we call a rebound. Um, I know about rebound. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not that girl from college, I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> no, what, you what never happened? fix a house on a rebound. That's right. No. <laughs> Actually, it's a complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> just house, no, I'm just well, Chris, I'm I see you over there twisting your hand. Looks the music's like playing. That break. means actually yeah. we're coming up against a break. Time flies. You're having fun talking about cracks or rebounds in Rob's case. <laughs> So stay tuned. We're going to go up against a break right now. We'll be right back. Irrepressible smile such as yours Warms an old implacable heart such as mine Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at one 800 808 Five five four eight, and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> Guys are like stereo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll come on. I'm right, uh, Jeff Gibson up here. He's he's kind of uh, fairly new with uh, uh, Permapier. And uh, what? Tell me what your capacity you're working. Well, I'll be I'll be moving down from Dallas to take over some of the extra uh, leads we're going to be having coming in from the internet and different things. Uh, and I'll be working with Brian Gilchrist to do evaluations, and then I'll be working marketing. Describe what an evaluation is. When, when you what you do, you come okay. out. Someone says, "I think I've got an issue." You come out, and where do you start, and where do you end? We'll <laughs> we'll get the leads to come in from cracks and different things like that, and uh, and I'll come out, and we've got uh, a zip level that we take elevation changes from if your foundation is deflecting from the front to back, or or you know, try to find out what's going on. Oh, Joe. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you bring, you bring 
bring a machine? Sniff out That's a the yeah the, the, the zip level we bring out to do the. I'm not walking around going yeah you feel a little low over here. Yeah. I can actually tell you. Well, I understand you can feel a uh, one inch drop in eight foot. As, as I understand that you yeah. can physically feel that. So sometimes if you feel like you're walking down here, there's a good chance that you are. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's a good time to call a perma and say, come out and do it. Now, and do you all charge for your evaluation nope, when you nope. come out? We do the evaluations for free, and we do not only slab work, but pier and beam as well. And there's a lot okay. of pier and beam here. In, in, in there is. You get inside yep. the loop, there's a lot of a lot of crawl space and things like that. And, of course, those are a little bit easier to work on, since you don't have to tear up stuff as much. On the pier and beam? Yeah, on the pier and beam. Oh, it's fun space. to crawl under a house. We yeah. actually crawl. We'll, at at perma we crawl for your pier and beam. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we, so we get under the house. We crawl. We crawl yeah. for your business. That's exactly yeah. right. And of course, we'll have Ashley to come up later. And curse, I have witnessed him crawling. I sold a house on the heights, and he actually dug his way underneath to go crawl. He's oh, wow. one of the few inspectors that it's where will he, still yeah. call. It's where he got his family pet, a, a foot and a half spider named Steve. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and uh, but but it is a, it is a process because sometimes when you have the, those older houses, I'm, I'm the straight guy here, you know, and. Uh, Everyone else is a funny man. Right. Not talking about or- sexual orientation anymore. <laughs> I was going to say, Rob always feels the need to clarify <laughs> yeah, that he is straight. a straight man. Hey, hey, Rob, I told you, man, we're still friends no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> There's no judgment here, Rob. He's still on the rebound, though, remember. <laughs> on, on some occasions, that they, they, they're great beams and stuff that have brought it away and caused the deflection in the floors and things like that. So do you all work on that kind of thing, too, or do you call somebody in? Because those are old wooden beams on some of those old houses. And they yeah. will actually yeah. rot away, and you have to come in with uh, equipment, lift the house up, pull that beam out, and put a new one in. Do you all it, do that, too? Yes, absolutely. Replace awesome. the beams, the floor joists, the subfloor, whatever needs to be fixed. And so. at the point a, a great beam rots away, it's uh, then technically referred to as a average beam or <laughs> subpar beam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of the great beams are concrete, so well, it's rotting you know, away. you got problems. <laughs> well, what I've seen a lot of it, and people should be aware of this, on these older houses, when there's a crawl space, that you're supposed to have a minimum of 18 inches. And, yeah, that's, that's, and I have had one house I sold that had to be dug out. They actually had to excavate it because mm-hmm. it had like six inches, and there's no way you could get in there and do anything. But if you have soil hitting against those beams, they'll rot. I don't care if they're water, uh, you know, treated or not. Water damage, <clears throat> water damage, termite damage, all kinds of things. And, and as you start to see moisture damage on these beams, they're more susceptible to termite damage. So. That's termites, uh, subterranean termites love soft, wet wood. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And that's why oftentimes you'll see uh, termite damage start occurring around your, your trim and your front doors and your the, uh, the out exterior doors. That water, they didn't prime it correctly usually because most of the time builders don't prime that, that trim. Water bounces up, starts getting real wet. I did a house in Bel Air one time and they had to take it apart uh, full of subterraneans. And beams are the same way. Wet, moist, they love it. They don't like that hard hardwood, you know. They, they they want the easy stuff to chew, you know. So anyway, um, so it's hard to find a a, a good hardworking term, termite these days, you know. They're, they don't want the easy they're, stuff. They're lazy. Honest, foundation repair company, yeah. and yeah. we're not lazy. We're honest and reliable, and well, that, we'll come it, out. That's one thing I really liked about because there's some companies out there who will come out and, and convince you that you need to have major work done, and sometimes it's not. That sometimes it's something that can be easily uh, rectified in other ways. And so you all are very good about that. It's like, like, you really don't need anything. Or it's so minimal, us coming out and doing something major is not going to help you a lot. So, sure, sure. You yeah. know, this isn't television. You can't shake your head. You no. Know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm disagreeing with you. Nodding in agreement over there. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. So, well, they just like to go out and look at cracks. I mean, and, yeah. you know, whether they're going to do that, something with it or not. That's usually the first thing people see is, is a crack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us started. Uh, you know, we've got three usually, shows like this. Of course, usually that's Walmart, but uh, yeah. that's, that's another show. Oh, wow. Okay. But you can bring your Walmart gift card. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Great oh, segue. Like nice yes. uh, tie back. That was yes, so good. great segue. That's for the Debelton Children's Home. That is correct. So we uh, we are accepting those and, and all sorts of Target cards. I hope they don't listen to this show. <laughs> they go, they, yeah, next year they go, would, would you not sponsor us? <laughs> we, would, we would really appreciate it. We're going to have to ask you all to quit. <laughs> Please don't call the crack people on. Do okay. Yeah. Well, they had, I, we had a great idea for a T-shirt on the break there. That said, got crack? Call yeah. us. Perfect. Right. Bert, so I think they'd probably get a lot of the tra- traffic on that website. <laughs> <laughs> looking for other things, but, okay, but uh, it helps the rankings, well, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for the introduction. Yes, and, I, and welcome to Houston. They always are, you have... already, are you already located here? Uh, 
I'm moving down from Dallas, but it's, it's, I lived here before, and it's nice to get back to Houston. So when are you going to be here on a permanent basis? Mm, Next end of January. End of January. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well are, welcome to Houston. How do he, people he's going to be here on a perma basis. Perma basis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I really hope so. I'd like oh, to stay this time. So. They, okay. They can um, Actually, people can get a hold of us by going to www.permapure.com. And you can schedule an evaluation at no cost. You can actually chat with me, Ashley Bryant. I'm there live, so I can help you out. And you can also get our phone number from there, find our Facebook, find our Better Business Bureau, a lot of other information. We also have a blog there, some fun stuff and some informative and Thanks. let me tell you, a great company. You call up Ashley, she'll just crack you up the whole time. It's <laughs> I am always cracking up. So yes, yes the shy and retiring Ashley <laughs> Bryant. <laughs> so well, this is a great segue into uh, another person we have here, which is our great sponsor and inspector, is yes. Ashley Bowles. Ashley, why don't you kind of step over here so we yeah, can actually put Yeah, and for those who don't know, microphone. Ashley is absolutely an incredible inspector. He's been a long time, from day one, supporter of the radio show. He's my favorite Canuck. Yes, uh, favorite Canuck. And let me tell you, does a lot, I mean, just a great individual, though. I mean, well, we he, only bring him here because his yeah. mom brings those lobsters in every year. That's exactly. <laughs> that exactly. We had to stay on the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> had to stay on the A list. Yes. So that was really you good. You know, time. and if you're buying a home and you just need somebody to go out there and inspect your whole home, including the crack, Ashley's the guy to go do it. <laughs> I find a lot of cracks. A- <laughs> Ashley has arguably seen more crack than anybody in the room. I, I-, I-, I could agree with you there. <laughs> you know, I have some day with the sensors that's going to get a hold of this and go, you know what? <laughs> Guys, there's another radio station down the street. Why don't you, why don't you go talk to them? Yeah. But, um, one of the things that actually you and I were talking about last night is that you, you know you've you've really built your business up tremendously, and of course that's largely to the real estate rat pack. Most yeah, definitely. absolutely. And um, it, it, you have gotten some great guys, but you're going to expand your business here, and, and it kind of segues into what they were talking about because you're talking about having equipment now that you can actually shoot uh, yeah, elevation so and things like that. Thinking about bringing in a zip level that way we can, if going through the house and start noticing, you know, there's a lot of cracks. There's vertical cracks. Uh, Diagonals, windows don't open and close. <laughs> Doors start rubbing against the, the gym. Crowd. We just lost them. Yeah. John, John, Dad is having flashbacks to the first show. When, when all, we're, we, all we need is Brett Hatfield on here. We started last time about the vertical and horizontal cracks, and we got worse from there. So we had to. When you're out uh, shooting yeah. elevation, you use mainly a brush rifle, or is that kind of a scope? <laughs> well, we use a technical situation. thing called a ball. <laughs> We just run it wrong. <laughs> well, that's actually is one way to do it. Is you put the, a ball down and see how, how it does roll. But. It's just not as precise. Yes. Welcome back to our elevation shooting show. <laughs> <laughs> so that process basically is you shoot an elevation and, and uh, you find one that's uh, what you would consider your. Well, there's your, if there's a starting point. It'd be your base, and then I, I, after that, you take different uh, elevations, basically uh, around the slab, and it gives you a deflection. And it tells you how much. Uh, movement has been in the slab sometimes it's sometimes there's a noticeable slope and stuff on a foundation but that's from workmanship when it was actually poured it's bad pour then so it really mm-hmm. starts off about all about <clears throat> that base then huh all yeah, about right. that base. All yeah. about the base. Well, all about that those, base yes. uh, <laughs> no well, treble well, that's that's a great point because i know that uh there's there's different you know quality of slabs out there because people are in a hurry right now uh people are trying to throw concrete into the to forms quickly and it doesn't get leveled out no, and when it comes down to like the, because I do pre-pour inspections, go out and inspect uh, for your tension cables and everything before they actually pour the concrete to make sure that it's done right. And a lot of the times I go, I come across the drawings and I'm looking at the drawings and it doesn't match. And what, what do you see is the biggest mistake that they're making out there? Uh, at the top of the piles, they're not sloping in 45 and the, the top of the pile where it goes into the grade beams. So it actually, when you have a 90-degree angle or a sharp angle, it causes a stress point in your foundation. And a lot of the times it's just missed because they're in there, they trench it, cover it, and they want to be done. Yeah, and but basically um, builders don't want to go back and fix that. You, show, you get the drawing, the engineer says it needs to be sloped, and they're not sloping it. Correct. And I think one of the biggest values, uh, and one of the things I really learned from you on, on this is that uh, – I couldn't see a greater value. People don't really think about it when they, they've got a builder and the builder has an inspector and they kind of, it's natural to buy into that thought process that, you know, they're looking out to build, uh, you know, the best product for you and all that sort of thing. But man, it makes so much sense to have a independent working on your behalf as your advocate 
uh, inspector during that build process. It's so important, not just the, the finished product, but during the process. You do a, a, a multiple stage kind of process, right, when they're, when they're building a new home. Yes, sir. Yeah, we do. It's, there's three stages. Uh, you have a – the first is yes, your sir. pre-pour. <laughs> I wow. throw everybody off by, <laughs> by saying something intelligent. <laughs> well, first off, we start off, we like to start off with a pre-pour. So we give you an evaluation before they actually pour the concrete. And then the second stage that we go into is your framing and rough-in stage. That's checking uh, the electrical rough-in, your plumbing rough-in. Uh, I, I was on one house just about a month ago when we went into the, the framing and rough-in inspection. I actually noticed all their drain pipes were off about six inches. Oh, wow. So you, when you have your drain pipes coming up through your walls, you can't set a toilet. So they ended up having to excavate part of the foundation, or the toilet will be sitting out partially in the yard, or right? Something like that, and you have to. It's really embarrassing. It is right. sometimes because when <laughs> just when the back half is sticking out, it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. then you've got a crack issue. <laughs> and, you, yeah. and sometimes they call it a plumber's crack. <laughs> plumber's crack. <laughs> and it just goes down here from there, folks. <laughs> But you can shoot the elevation if it is going downhill, right? That's right, and we can. So we can uh, you know, Chris, I just got the signal up there that there, she's thinking about taking a break again. She's you know, always you know. I tell you what, time flies when you're having fun or talking about cracks or you know about where you're going to end up putting the toilet. So, um, you know, but you know, we have a lot more information to come. We do. We have a lot more people to, to speak with here. Hopefully, everyone's enjoying it. Again, you can reach us at eight hundred eight zero eight five five four eight. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And we're back. <laughs> People Boy. just kind of flowing here, flowing there, everywhere. It's like you know, party. That, that's part of it right here. You know, we party in the mornings. That's right. That's right. So, uh... <clears throat> Why don't you uh, introduce our next guest, since you are the one responsible for bringing on. If he's not any good, <laughs> you're still responsible for bringing him on. I, I it was a last minute. just ran into him in county. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of time in your hand. On. We, we shared a, an apple, and uh, he's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> could, could we expound on that a little bit? <laughs> no, no. I, t- t- actually, I've known Terry for, for many, many years now. Uh, we... we Shared a stage together back in uh, our church musician days together. That's how we met. And, uh, uh, you know, normally they, they keep the, the keyboard guy on one side of the stage and the guitar player on the other side. There's a lot of fighting. It's kind of like Crips and Bloods and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but we got along really well. And, and uh, Terry is a phenomenal guy and owns a, a, a wonderful insurance company. I've always had a lot of respect for him and... and uh, he, he's one of the people that I believe gets the concept of, of giver's gain and, and uh, um, coming to offer rather than coming to take. And uh, that's kind of a vague thing. But anyway, uh, uh, for those who know, re- re- understood what I was referencing there, Terry Green, uh, tell us a little bit about your company and, and who you are. Okay, well, thanks, Joe. Thanks for letting me uh, be on the show. Uh, we're basically an insurance uh, agency. The actual legal name is Green Insurance Services LLC, but I go by Portraits of Motion Insurance, which is the weirdest insurance name on the planet. Here, and the, here. And the reason that people <laughs> ask me all the I, time, I would concur, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, the reason is you go to a networking thing and you say, what do you do? You say, I do insurance, and people understand that as I've got the bubonic plague and I want to inflict you with it. They don't. Yes. They, so, <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some uh, calculus formulas. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason is that really what I do in life is I energize people with a picture of a better tomorrow. And when bad things happen and they, people need the insurance, that's what they need. They need somebody that knows how to move them forward. And that's I looked right. at uh, the biggest, one of the biggest computer and uh, uh, smartphone companies is named after a fruit, Apple, which makes no sense. So that's why we went for the the, uh, the weirder name, but it describes what we do. There you go. And, and and when the phone call comes in at 3 in the morning, you don't need a president to answer the line. Uh, <laughs> you need an insurance guy. 
<laughs> Actually, that's one thing I was going. Because chances to... are, you probably need that more than the president. <laughs> Who are you? I don't. What are you? I don't need you. <laughs> and that's one thing I tell people: the most important thing insurance is having an agent and make sure you've got their cell phone number. Because yep. when the bad thing happens, it's not going to happen between nine and five. Yeah. And if you get a recording and and start pressing buttons. Fire them. You need somebody that's going to respond. You got an emergency. That's what we do. I like that. We answer that all the phone all the time. That was pretty. That was pretty uh, direct. There, he was just fire them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, no, he, he's right though. You know, one of the things we've gotten to in society. In fact, in fact, we had a conversation about this in the office the other day. Is too many people want to try to automate those processes. And let me tell you, I was talking to somebody the other day. You know, if I call some place and I got a voicemail, I go operator. Operator, operator, yeah. and if I don't get the operator, I'm going to hang up. You start I, I doing that massive Z, you know, uh, zero, you know, <laughs> yeah. d d d d d d Yes, <laughs> yes. About 45 so, times, I get a human. Right, right. So, you know, <laughs> the, the fact you can call somebody and reach somebody, reach you, right. reach some member of your staff, that is a huge difference in making business happen. And more importantly, it's it's that uh, it's that security you have whenever you're insurance, insuring something that is very near and dear to your heart. A lot of times your home, your automobile, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. That, I, I can't, under, I can't uh, say how great that is. I mean, I'm, literally for me, uh, if it's a website and they don't have a telephone number and they're, or, or even an email, they just have a form on their website for you to fill in, done. I'm not doing business with them. If I call them on the phone and get the voicemail system and it's a loop, it's one of those constant you can't get to a human being no matter how hard you try right. voicemail systems, yeah, depressing the zero just sends you back to the main menu, kind of a thing. Not doing business with them. Emergencies only between nine and five. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, it's yes, ridiculous. Yeah. And <laughs> even then, it's a challenge. Even though there's there are companies out there that are like, hey, I don't care if it is nine to five. We don't want to talk to you. <laughs> they exist. They're out there quite a bit. So Joe, Joe's threatened to write a book called uh, "Please Take My Money," which talks about people who are in a service industry and. Refuse to take your money. You, they they, they get, actually they, fight you on doing business with them. Right. Yes, it's, like, it's kind of yeah. like a, a filtering process. If you can make it through their their uh, you know trials, they will take your money. Well, well, <laughs> so it's um, great that you actually actually answer the phone, Terry. Not all insurances are equal. So you know what's the big? I know the big print giveth and the small print taketh away. And so, uh, uh, one of the things I I always like to ask is, you know, there's uh, A plus rated companies, A minus, and there's a lot of different kinds of coverages out there. And you're not, you know, if you just go for price, what might you miss? Well, the one thing before I was what was called a, a captive agent which I've always been independent, but I had a contract with one major carrier. For two years, I've been independent, so now I'm dealing on home with about 12 different companies. And to be honest, here's what I've discovered. When you call those companies and you do finally get through, you're going to talk to a human being, and really most of them are nice as far as you don't need to pay for the name. And you said A-rated uh, companies. That's what you want, and that's all we deal with. If you've got the most popular kid in school who's got an A plus, and you've got some other kid that doesn't, that no one knows he's got an A plus. Who has the better grade? It's the A. So you don't need. There's really, to be honest, not a lot of difference between the companies. If they're A rated, they've got the money. And once again, it's your agent that's going to make things happen because yeah. all of them, they, they're they're people. But co big corporations, you need an agent to push things yeah. through. And that's what we do. And, and a real estate transaction, you know, everyone's pretty cost sensitive for the most part. And what are the what are the downfalls if you're going for just like the cheapest? What are, what's going to be missed? Well, once again, they've, they've got to be uh, A-rated. Right now, the rates in Houston, unfortunately, are some of the highest in the, the country. Right. Unfortunately. I get people all the time, uh, uh, referral sources that say it needs to be such and such. When I started the business, there were about 80 companies that wrote home insurance. Right now, there's about 15. And the ones that have stayed, uh, they're very selective. So it is getting in tougher. Uh, but basically, once again, that the agent is so important because insurance is very complex for most people. Get with the agent that's going to take the time to not give you a, uh, a cookie-cutter approach, but to assess your needs and make sure – uh, that you're getting what you uh, need. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, too, just to, to toss in on that, it, the the agent. I cannot under uh, under or cannot stress enough uh, the importance of the agent being a on uh, on your side uh, because there's so many factors that affect uh, the rates, and and I see this a lot in my industry on the credit side. Um, 
that uh, on auto insurance, you know, the difference of a good credit score and a bad credit score absolutely impacts your rates. Well, he got your that rates. plug in there, didn't you he? Mean credit, <laughs> you mean credit impacts rates? <laughs> yeah. What a concept. I had no yes, idea. Uh, but not to, not to talk about the credit side of it, but to talk about the insurance side of it, uh, it a good agent, knowing that you've got a, a, an agent who is continually looking at, you could be with a company and you would think, I've had no accidents, I've been with this company for a long time, my record with them is improving, yet the rate will go up, just arbitrarily go up on you. And if you don't have an agent who is actually looking for that stuff and, and saying, hey, the same A product over here is less expensive. Well, I'll, I'll comment on that. This is beyond car insurance. They went up, I had a, a company that I deal with, and they I have never no accidents. They do auto debit out of my account, so it's never late. And they kept going up and up. I found out if you call them, they will reassess it, but you got to be proactive. And the same thing would probably be true is probably once a year, people should sit down with you and relook at what their insurance needs are. You know, I just did a, a policy yesterday for a, a good friend and another client on a com- uh, do commercial insurance. And his home was about $4,000 with his other carrier. And we got him great coverage with an A-rated company, about $1,500. Oh and my! We really now. I can't guarantee that every time. You hear that I, today? Guarantee Terry Green. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, but the real this. Uh, we are saving people two thousand, three thousand, seven hundred dollars. Can't do it every time, but what we do is we look at different companies, and some companies are going to have that rate. If it does go up, now being independent, we can go to another company. And, you know, that's that, that was kind of more my point. Rob, you was right in that I can be proactive and call the company. And all. I don't want to have to be aware of, okay, was this the month that my home insurance is, is renewing? And, you know, did they go up on my – I want to I – like, I like to know that my agent is doing that for me. Uh, you know, I like getting a phone call uh, that says, hey, by the way, your insurance was going to renew and it was going up. Uh, $30 a month, but I went ahead and shopped you around, and, and I was able to reduce that, actually. You're going to pay $14 less a month. I'm like, I love you. I'll, I, where, where, you know, where do I yeah. send the donuts? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and I always like to talk about coverages. I remember a house I sold a long time ago, and it was to a young attorney, and um, he had probably some of the polybutyl type of pipes underneath the house. It was back in the, you know, built back in the uh, probably mid to late 60s. And of course, that that pipe basically had dissolved, and the earth was being acting as the plumbing system. And so he makes an insurance claim, and all of a sudden, the insurance company says, "No, we're we're not going to cover that." So, talk about coverages. I mean, there's some things that may not necessarily be covered in some policies, and in, in uh, and, and that goes back to the old HOA and HOB type policies. Yeah, and that's I, I guess right. that's probably where I want to go is what right. what what. Uh, what are you recommending? Because those are some things, especially if your house is built in the 60s, that can occur. And, you know, you need to know, am I covered? Am I? That's all we really want to know. We want, you know, some sort of transparency. Does this, is this covered? He right. did get covered eventually because he was an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Let him know as you start the claim yes, process. Oh, by the way, I'm an attorney, and, you know, it's not going to cost me anything to litigate. Yeah. But I, we don't want to insure, uh, sue our insurance company. We just want to understand what's covered. Right. And so uh, talk, talk about what Chris was just talking about, the HOA, okay, HOB. Okay, HOA, HOB. Unfortunately, the policies are written in a complex matter. So once again, get an agent that can speak to you in uh, kindergarten In layman's English. terms, yes. I sit down. I've got uh, two clients that are both attorneys. They've got a double master's. And I, I broke it down, and she said, thank you for speaking to me like I was in kindergarten. That's what I found. I don't need to impress people with how in- – No, we're not – but the HOA, HOB, the difference is, for example, uh, on water leaks. An HOA, if you have a sudden and accidental uh, accident, that's going to be covered. If it was a slow leak, let's say over five months, you didn't have it inspected, and then you got damaged, the HOA will not cover that. The HOB will. So if it's maybe it's three hundred dollars more to have the HOB, you got to say, do I want to pay three hundred dollars a year just in case I have a slow leak? That's that's well, the well big you know difference. underneath the slab right. though they had to excavate, so you're talking about a six thousand dollar repair, which right. could be you know take kind of mess up some people's budgets. Right, right. and <laughs> once again when they talk about the uh, foundation coverage, 
That means the money to go in and break the foundation down uh, to get to the repair. That's what it means. It doesn't cover, unfortunately, it doesn't cover uh, everything. And again, I just, I, I just like to know what's covered. And I don't, I don't want, sometimes, I, you know, I, I'm a deer in the headlights when it comes to insurance. It's like, yeah. you know, right. t- tell me. And so that's very helpful to know that stuff. But I think people want to hear. Yeah, and a lot of times I think it comes down to what they call named and not named perils. Is that correct? Right. Now, most of the thing with the, on the practical level, you want your fire, theft, wind, hail, hurricane. As far as, you know, uh, Pluto falling on the planet's probably not going to uh, happen. <laughs> but there's coverage for that, right? <laughs> there's coverage for that. Yeah, I always ask people, do you want the Pluto coverage? <laughs> you know, speaking of Pluto coverage, though, guess what we're coming up against right now? Break. Got to pay for the show. We have oh. to pay for the show. How do we time. get a hold of you, Terry? 832-445-8492. Go to Facebook, Portraits of Motion Insurance. It's amazing how many prospects and clients get me on Facebook. But those two things, and once again, we do answer the phone. We answer it quicker, and we answer it better than anybody else. Portraits of Motion on Portraits Facebook. Portraits of Motion Insurance. You know, we're still going to have a lot more to go. We have 15 more minutes coming up. We have the whole gang still in here, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. And oh, what you do to me. I'm like an ocean wave that's... Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And we're, we're back. back. Wow. Those Time half flies when you're having fun. Are, it's half, it's fun. I didn't really Time know. flies when you're having fun, yeah. looking at cracks, yeah, speaking about cracks, and so, you know, about we insurance. Kind of Goofing off during the break. We kind of lost Ashley uh, kind of mid uh, thought we here. We were talking about uh, shooting. He, talk, he talked like about like pipes that. and all of a sudden left. So, so uh, why don't we bring you kind of back in here? And uh, he kind of went, he kind of disappeared. He's been doing that all morning, by the way. He's like, where's yes. Ashley? Well, you know, it, we left off that, you know, you can have the toilet that ends up yeah. going too far out and seeing cracks. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's like, I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Power suggestion. <laughs> yes. I was checking the plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> so did it pass? It worked. It worked. Sometimes it's really simple, you know. Uh, and he really that, tried hard to break it. You know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am going to maintain some modicum of dignity here and move forward. And, and I, That never we, worked we were right. talking about We were talking about new construction, and you've, you've shared with me a lot of things you find before the concrete is poured. Because after the concrete is poured, it hides a lot of bad stuff. So it's hard what, to see underneath. Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> And they're really funny about breaking it up so you can look at it. Uh, <laughs> what's the biggest, the common mistakes? Of course, we know about not putting the 45 uh, right there at the grade beam. What else? Is, you said something about the visqueen, that, uh, the moisture barrier. Moisture barrier. There's a lot of times it doesn't have the proper, they don't lap it properly. It's supposed to be six inches. Sometimes you have parts that are exposed and that allows moisture to wake up through your slab. Uh, also, a lot of uh, grounding issues with. Uh, with our slabs, they try to they run rebar through the slab, and it's supposed to act as your ground. But when you have a moisture barrier that separates your concrete from the ground, your ground really doesn't work all that great because you have it's isolated. So then your slab can actually cause electrical issues. But yes, and it, it's to cover for. There's been issues where there's been lightning strikes, and it'll actually. If a lightning strikes by the house, it goes through, and it goes down through the grounding rod that's encased in the concrete, it can actually damage it. So I guess that would make sure that an insurance company finds that out and say, well, you know, we're not going to pay off that because it was done faulty. Is that right, Terry? Um, the, the, one of the things you were talking about also is that oftentimes they'll they'll um, they'll puncture that moisture barrier with wood or something like that, is it, kind of working around the parts of the structure. And I, th- I thought about it. It's like, really, that is moisture barrier. It's there for a reason. And it's all supposed to be covered, sealed, and but then when you start punching holes through it because you have an air bubble, well, is it really doing its job? No, I would say no. And then of course, then that you know a, a termite only needs a sixty fourth of an inch to get through anything, and so if you start creating cracks and things like that, that you know, and uh, they can come up right through the slab, which yes, is sir. a real surprise, uh, or up through the plumbing, well, or when they're doing their, because when we do a, there's usually a separate termite inspection done on the house around here because it's known for termites. One of the places they look is around all your plumbing. So when you're when you go into your house and they're like 
there's no access to access the plumbing for your tub, you could be getting there could be insects coming up through the ground around your plumbing, yeah, and it, you won't know. And some of those builders use those collars. Do, do those really work or around the plumbing? It, <laughs> he's got a big grin on his face. It's like, no, I can't, huh? I can't say. <laughs> 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 Quote unquote. <laughs> it's just like that was those, a lot funnier with the face. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's just like it's just like those bait stations they try to sell everybody. This is like I have yep. so many uh, bug inspector go really, but your bait stations. But having a good termite yeah. inspector to go out and evaluate your home when you're buying it, it's a great idea. It is a great idea. I, I insist on all that. You know, the lenders aren't requiring it anymore. What, it used to be back uh, a while back that on every transaction. Well, not, it, it's, still every requi- transaction. it's still required on a resale property, but the problem is is, is on a, a new home sale, a lot of times they have treated plates and et cetera, et cetera. So what they're requiring is to be able to show that you have the soil treated, pre-treated, Prior to having a poor go down. Let me tell you about pre-treating. Yes. In fact, they pre-treat it, yes, but guess what? The first thing they they do when they get towards the end of the house, they disturb the soil by putting in landscaping. Yes. So the pre-treatment means nothing. I'm just lending, Rob. Yes. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's all your fault, Chris. (laughs) I'm just saying. That's all you agents out there. I just want to lend. Rob apparently wants me to uh, to uh, contest it. (laughs) I want you out there spraying. And treating the soil, Chris. <laughs> but, but, Memory closing. But uh, even though we're not on television, Ashley is shaking his head because that's exactly what happens. The pre-treatment is is really you go up there and you disturb the soil because you're you're finishing the house. Yeah. And so that pre-treatment doesn't it just doesn't work. And, and same thing if you have it treated is uh, a lot of people come back in with their mulch and their their landscaper right after the treatment. It's like. You just, just, made paid. A, just made a nice little bridge. <laughs> 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 so, so it's like, thank you. You might, well, you might as well just bring it right up to the weep hole so they can all come in, too, without having to climb. Yeah, so they don't have to work so hard to get into your house. That's right. Exactly. They can stay nice and moist. Just go right in the house. You never we, don't want our, we don't want our termites to work hard. Yes. <laughs> just like to make it have, easy. Yes. Like just get a nice little pathway yeah. into the house. <laughs> you can't. It's a new generation of termite. You just can't expect that much out of them. Animal you activists. Know? Yeah, that's, that's right. We don't. Ba- we don't back in that. the great generation of termites, they would work to get into your house. <laughs> they would build tunnels and go out the side yeah. of your house. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> now they expect a light rail system. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that, that you had talked about, we were talking last night, um, <laughs> uh, is uh, incorporating infrared. And I've heard plus or minus about infrared. So talk, talk about that technology. Well, it, infrared is it is what it is. It allows you to see different. May I quote you on that temperature. <laughs> it, it is what it is. It, it, it's exactly <laughs> Never what it is. Heard that it's balls. Infrared, infrared get, is what when you're it looking is. when you're looking at the house. You'll see temperature differentials, and the the proper way to do it, you have to you have to adjust your equipment every day before you go in. There ha- it has to be calibrated. That way, you can get proper. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like something's going on behind me. I, I had to adjust myself. I apologize. Yes, adjusting its equipment. Infrared is a great tool to help you do your inspections. It can allow you to see if there is insulation missing in a wall. It's not guaranteed to see everything. But it is a great tool, and it will assist. Yeah, because under the, your, your Trek license, uh, Trek Real Estate Commission license, and with the one thing that, that we most people will put a disclaimer on is that it's a visual inspection, and you can only see what you can see, and you're not allowed by law to take anything apart to look at it. Correct. We, and so we infrared can. will probably give you some. It gives you a to, little bit more, a little bit more in depth. But it, again, it's only temperatures that it sees. So if there is something, if it's if it just so happens to be the same temperature outside, same temperature inside, you're not going to see anything. You're not going to see anything. So it's a great tool. We're going to going to use it, but we're still going to do our visual. Still going to inspect whatever we can see and not limit it and rely on that as. Is there other tech, other technologies out there that are that are starting to come online that that for inspections that not really, huh? Not <laughs> that, really. That X-ray vision stuff. <laughs> well, I've been working on it, <laughs> but. <laughs> but so far, not not so good, huh? It hasn't worked out. We have too much kryptonite here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I, say. I think this it's is, the heat, though, really. Yeah. It kind of slows me down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, I've, I've often had that happen with uh, someone will have their AC will go out or something like, after an inspection, 
And the only thing you can do is you can go up there to the attic and say, look, at, or shoot across the coils when it's cooling, the differential's, you know, 15 degrees. Uh, it, uh, I've gone out to houses before, uh, gone in. You've been out my and visual, in houses before, I've really? Done my visual inspection in the attic Never space. Guessed. Something has happened <laughs> shortly after I've left the property, and they're like, well, what did you do? Oh, oh yeah, we had that happen on that house. Absol- I told absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. All I did was look at it. I was like, "It's not my fault. It broke." <laughs> it was just timing, and, and and I have had a house closed, and the week later, the air conditioner broke. Because you know what, an air conditioner can break at any time. Well, and right. of course, it helps to have a one guard home warranty. See how I yes. put that in there? Absolutely. But a lot of times, shoot an invoice out. Retweet. We do invoice them actually. Ching. Retweet. We don't have to invoice them. We we automatically invoice them. But it's it's something that people need to be aware of. You can't take things apart, and so I always recommend, of course, bringing in other trays, like a, a licensed HVAC person who can take it apart. Yes, and we recommend that if I start coming in across problems and there start becoming multiple issues, I recommend that someone that is a professional in that area come out and evaluate. So, like, that way, can they can take give it you, apart. Exactly. They can take it apart. They can give you a price and tell you exactly what you're into. And I think H- HVAC is probably the number one thing that I'm always concerned about because it's one of your really big ticket items. And insurance doesn't cover that unless it gets hit by lightning, I guess. Uh, he's modern. He's him. Everyone thinks we're on television today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's nodding their head. It doesn't work. You must you must respond verbally. Hey, we got three minutes. So you know what? We need to do our lightning round. We are coming up against the lightning How round. We were just having fun over here. We, we have to make sure. Flies when you're having fun. We have to make sure also that everybody knows. <laughs> we have to make sure everybody knows how to get a hold of Ashley as well. Yes. That is true. Ashley, how can, you know, one of the things we're going to do lightning round, 30 seconds, let us know what you want everybody to leave the show with and leave it off also how we can reach you. And say something brilliant. Go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I've just drawn a blank. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. Yeah. It's going to cause some cracking. <laughs> <laughs> He's cracking under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if anybody would like to reach me, they can just call me and I'll answer the phone. My number is 832-306-3723. Give me a call and I'd love to do an inspection for you. And let me tell you, that is the best world inspector class. in town. Incredible inspector right there. Ashley, Ashley Bowles. You want to be the definitely look him up. You can go to we Facebook. Have another, and we have three Ashleys in the room That is today. correct. And we have another Ashley up right here. Ashley, what do you want everybody to leave the show knowing about you? I want you to know that we do offer funding at closing. We offer transferable lifetime warranties. And you can reach us um, on our website by typing in www.permapeer.com. You can reach us by phone as well. That That's your cue to that's get the phone cue. number, John. That's your cue, John. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get over here to the mic. I was unprepared for the moment. It's just the phone um, number, John. That's it. <laughs> yeah, get it. Come on. <laughs> you can call our Houston office at area code seven one three eight four nine 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 three. And make sure to go like our Facebook at Permapeer Foundation Repair of Texas. Okay. Terry, Perfect. Terry, you're up. Terry, how about you? Say oh, something brilliant. Here it goes. My name is Terry Green, eight three two four four five eight four nine two. Your life is busy. You don't have time to worry about insurance. Call me. I know it. We're going to make sure you get taken care of. Give me the responsibility. I'll make sure you have what you need. You don't have to worry about it. Awesome. You know, one of the things I tell everybody all the time is all this, this is all great information. You can go to the website at uh, realestateratpack.com. You can look us up on Facebook. We always like to leave every show with a quote. I found a great quote for today. Actually, I went out to, to Google and typed it in and put in great quotes. And it said, here, here's what I'm coming up with. It's by Leonard Cohen. It says, there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wow. Anyways, Until next time week. flies when you're having fun. You know, we want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Until next week, we will be out of here. And you've been listening to the Real Estate Rat Pack. The question is, who's Frank, who's Sammy, who's Dean, and who's the other guy? Uh, Chris, is, yes, Chris Frank. is Frank, I'm he's Dean. Dean, and I'm Sammy. Yes, he's <laughs> Dean. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So tune in to the really big show every Saturday at 9 a.m. right here on 100.7 The Word, KKHT.